Uh, Madhumita, we now move to part 3, that is the third video and uh, I would start this, the first question that I wish to ask you is that uh, the mandate or the four corners of the constitution, do they have any linkage uh, with the rules relating to seabed authority and exploration? So, the constitution of India would apply on the territory of India and the territorial sea of India up to 12 nautical miles. The constitution of India will apply up to 24 nautical miles in the contiguous zone in terms of customs, immigration, fiscal and sanitation laws. For all other aspects, it is international waters. And in the exclusive economic zone, whatever international law, international treaties and international best practices are there, India laws needs to harmonize with international law. In areas beyond national jurisdiction, that is beyond 200 nautical miles or whenever the continental shelf is declared, the international law, the mining code that will be put into place by the international seabed authority will be binding law. I do not foresee any clash between the Indian constitution and the mining code because India is represented in the council and the assembly of the international seabed authority as well as the legal and technical commission which has drafted the mining code. So, I am sure Indian scientists present there would have synchronized the laws and the mining code so as to ensure that there is no basic clash between the Indian constitution and the mining code. Thank you. Uh, moving on, my next question is that uh, there would be exploration contracts uh, that would be awarded that would come into operation at different stages for uh, various aspects relating to the deep sea mining. Now, what are the salient points that you wish to highlight in that aspect? The exploration contracts have already been allocated by the International Seabed Authority. There are 31 contracts as on date. Exploitation contracts will be allocated after the mining code is finalized. Now, among the um, 31 contracts, China has the maximum 5 contracts. India has two contracts in the Central Indian Ocean Basin and Indian Ocean region for polymetallic nodules and polymetallic sulphides. Other contracts are given to Republic of Korea, Japan, uh, then uh, of course, we have Russia, then various other countries, Tonga. And uh, let me also tell you that research is being done majorly in three areas, the clarion Clipperton zone, which is west of Mexico in the Pacific Ocean. We have in the North Atlantic Ocean off the coast of France and in the Indian Ocean region. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would also like to know that uh, within the national uh, uh, spectrum and outside, uh, what uh, different agencies are there that come into play uh, when we talk about international seabed mining. In India, the contract has been given to Ministry of Earth Sciences, that is the government of India and Ministry of Earth Sciences is the nodal ministry for seabed mining. And I, as I told you, we have two contracts one of polymetallic nodules and one of polymetallic sulphides. National Institute of Ocean Technology, Chennai and NCPOR and NIO Goa are directly involved in carrying out the research at sea in terms of the polymetallic nodules and polymetallic sulphides and IMMT Bhuvneshwar is doing a study on the minerals that are being taken out from the sea and analyzing the prospects of taking out nickel, cobalt, copper and manganese from this polymetallic nodules. Uh, Madhumita ji, I would like to ask you, you have already indicated that uh, study of this subject would involve uh, the 
emergence of uh, not only law people but uh, also the management, international diplomacy and you mentioned about the technolo uh, technology aspects. Now with that in, in background, uh, I would want your views that uh, the teaching in law schools which are the other subjects which a student studying this uh, must know or must be well acquainted with? Yes, sir. In fact, um, this seabed mining comprises of a lot of interdisciplinary study. While I would uh, like that some aspects of management and technology, at least what is a polymetallic nodules, what are polymetallic sulphides and what is the utility of uh, these very, very rare minerals like nickel, copper, cobalt and manganese and as uh, you would know that India has uh, no nickel mining and Vedanta Nicomet factory in Goa is the only nickel uh, processing plant in India and they are importing most of their resources from Australia. So, therefore, it is important for the students to study and know the utility of these minerals. Why are we considering these minerals and as green minerals for the green energy of the future? In terms of law, of course, students need to study admiralty law, commercial arbitration law, international trade law, law of carriage, law of marine insurance, law of maritime environment, maritime labor laws, maritime safety and security laws. I think these would be very uh, relevant subject as well as shipping laws per se because every aspect of these laws would come when commercial exploitations of seabed resources start. Also another important area the students need to understand and especially those students with a technical bent of mind is technology transfer and laws that would come into place in the future in terms of technology transfer. Technology transfer end of the day are contractual, but still there are international treaties and laws which come into play when technology transfer is taking place across jurisdictions. Uh, thank you, uh, that was quite helpful. And my last question now is uh, you mentioned in response to one of the earlier questions that so far uh, while dealing with the issues, the emphasis uh, is more on the security dimensions rather than the contractual or uh, the corporate aspects. Why is it so? Sir, incidentally in India, uh, marine engineering is taught or maritime security is taught. And the domain is largely con controlled by the Indian Navy, Indian Coast Guard. And in the civil sector, this subject uh, lacks complete domain awareness. And that is the case also in our law schools. We do not have really trained faculty teaching this subject. Indian industry is also not very well equipped in this domain. And uh, when the Secretary General was in India recently, for uh, 20 days, I had taken him around. We had an interaction with FIKI and the Blue Economic Task Force of FIKI. And I earnestly urged them that India's industry have to be involved because it is India's industry who will invest in India's own resources. So, unless the involvement of civil sector is there, this uh, domain awareness is very difficult. Another important aspect is 19 ministries in the government of India have a stake in the oceans, but we do not have a national maritime domain authority. Now, without a national maritime domain authority coordinating between the 19 ministries of the government with stakes in the ocean, what happens is various projects do not come into play and various projects which could have been envisaged for commercialization of this sector is not put into place today. Hence, from the Navy, this particular domain has to move on to the civil sector from just the scientists 
diplomats, lawyers and India's industry has to take interest in this domain of study. Thank you very much. Uh, you have been very candid and you have uh, responded uh, something that would be fully in uh, India's national interest. Thank you. Thank you so much.